Hey, hey, let's learn some math. Let's learn some math. Everybody in the club saying learn some math. I'm sorry, that was probably the dorkiest thing I've ever done. I'm so sorry. I really apologize. Let's get started. I want to teach you about the distributive property. Um, if you're going to distribute something, that means that you're going to give it equally among other people. Or actually, you don't have to be equal. You're just going to distribute something. That means you're going to hand it out. Um, like in work and business, there's called a distributor. That's someone who hands it out to the actual companies that you buy it from. Um, like if you're in wholesale marine parts, um, you know, all those boating centers that sell boat stuff, a distributor gives them the stuff and then they sell it to the customers. Okay, they distribute the equipment out. They'll get it from the manufacturers, put it in a big warehouse, and shoot it out to people. <clears throat> in uh, mathematics, it means that you're giving another number something from another number. Okay, cool, let's go. All right, so when you use the distributive property, Essentially what you're doing, <clears throat> the, the simple way of explaining it is, you're multiplying this times everything in here, okay, one at a time. So essentially this means multiplication. If you have like two like that, that just means two times three, it equals six. Parentheses mean multiplication if another number is hanging out right next door to it, okay? So what you're doing is you're multiplying it not only by the number that's straight up right next to it, but also every number in there, okay? A lot of kids mess up on this. They'll just distribute it to the first one. I'm done. Don't do that, okay? So, uh, for instance, let's say we've got this little fella here. Distribute that eight in there. Eight times 10 is 80. And then we do eight times four, which is 32. Don't forget your sign. And then we add those two together, 112. You're done, okay? I could also do it this way. Say I didn't distribute. I did 10 plus four is 14. So it's eight times 14. And eight times 14, that's 80 plus 13 is 12, and you're done. And that's the distributive property, okay? Um, let's look at another one. The distributive property also works going backwards. Let's so say you have 12 minus three, and you got a six there. Same thing, except you're just coming back this way. Multiply there, multiply there, okay? So it'd be 72 minus 18. Then you subtract, it'd be 64 and then 54. If you did that fast for me, it's okay. I apologize, it's been a long day. Actually, it's been the regular amount of time. This feels like a long day, okay? 54, that's correct. And that's the distributive property, okay? Let's look at some advanced distributive property. An advanced example of the distributive property would be something like this, 15 times 99. Okay, first thing that sticks out to you when you hear 99, you think 99, 100, okay? Well, guess what? The distributive property can allow us to solve this problem a little quicker, and maybe even in our heads. So we got 15. I know 99 is the same as what? 100 minus 1. I just turned this into something I can do the distributive property for. Take the 15, go in there. I know that's 1500, because I just take off the 1, put the 15, two zeros. 15 times 1 is 15. Then, this makes it a little more manageable. And then I just subtract those, and it'd be 1485. And I found my answer, all in my own brain. Thank you, brain. Thank you, advanced distributive property. Okay? Let's look at some other things that apply to distributive property. Let's just erase that little fellow. Okay, let's say we want to talk about something called terms. In an equation, when you hear your teacher talk about terms, they're talking about the things that make up an equation. So like 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. This has three terms. Your terms are separated by your plus and minus signs, okay? You've got one, two, three terms here, okay? That, those are what terms are. So let's say you got 8x plus 1500. You got a plus sign, that's term one, that's term two. I'm not dividing these, I just wanted to show you the amount of terms. And those are terms, okay? Now, the thing I wanna talk about now are called like terms. That means they are similar, okay? So say you've got um, 2x squared plus 4x minus um, 5x squared plus 8 minus x, okay? We want to simplify this, okay? When you do simplify this, it's called combining like terms, okay? So what we're doing, uh, well, I apologize. <laughs> so sorry, so sorry. All right, let's start with like terms. Like terms means that they have the same variable and that variable has the same exponent, okay? So right here, this is x squared. 
I don't care about the number. I care about the variable and its exponent, okay? X squared. That one only has an X. These are not like terms. This one has an X squared. These two are like terms. This one doesn't have an X or that, so it would just be a regular number. And then this has an X. These are like terms. And those are what like terms are, okay? Um, another way, uh, like a more advanced version of that, will be like 2xy squared plus 3x squared y plus 3xy plus xy squared, okay? Forget about your numbers. Look at your variables and exponents. You got x, one of the x's, y squared. You got x squared and a y. Oh, you're like, oh, these are like terms. Oh, they're not, okay? These are not like terms because the variable has to be attached to the exact same exponents, okay? The y has the exponent here. This one, the x has it. Not going to work. xy, still nothing. xy squared matches up with this one. Those are like terms, okay? Now, let's talk about combining like terms. Combining like terms, okay? When you combine like terms, essentially what you're doing is you are putting together the things that are like terms. You're simplifying the problem. You don't have to solve it all the time, but you can make it look prettier, a little smaller, and a little easier to manage. So you're not looking at something like, I look at this, a normal student looks at this and they think, goo, I don't know how to do that. Well, we can make this a lot more manageable, okay? This is the way I work combining like terms, and I recommend you do too, because it's very organized and it helps me work, uh, work it, okay? So when you're working on the paper, you've got this one. I circle that one, okay? Now what I'm doing is I'm looking for everything that is a like term of this. Everything that has x squared. No. Yes. When I circle it, make sure you include the sign in front of it, okay? A lot of people screw up right there. They'll just circle that and it jacks it up, okay? They'll just like, oh, it's always addition. Well, no, it's not. You talk weird. Any more x squareds? No. We're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And this, and I'm working a regular problem ignoring these. 2x squared minus 5x squared is negative 3, which do 2 minus 5, which would be negative 3. And then the x squared stays as is. It stays there. We don't sort of delete them or subtract them because of that. And then I mark these out. <laughs> because it's my paper, I can do whatever I want. Next, go to the next one. Positive 4x. I want to look for anything else with an x. No. Yes. Include the sign in front of it. So positive 4x minus what I know is always there, 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. And the x is still with it. And then my only thing left is 8, so add there. I just combined like terms and simplified this big old mamma jamma and made it a manageable number. Okay? Cool. So that's combining like terms. Um, the last thing I want to show you is um, it's called a coefficient. Okay, let's talk about coefficients. Simply put, a coefficient easiest terms possible the coefficient is the number in front of your variable. It's the number in front of the variable. So our variable here, remember in the last problems when we were talking about combining like terms? We cared about these. Now for coefficients, we just care about the number. Coefficient in this part, this term, two. The coefficient in this one is <coughs> positive three. The coefficient in this one is negative 42. Okay, don't forget your signs. And that's simply put what a coefficient is. So you just learned about a lot of stuff and I hope your brain feels good because it just got a good old-fashioned workout. Have a great day. Please subscribe and um, tell your friends. That'd be cool. Sure, why not? I mean, I took the time to talk to you. If you could take the time to talk to someone else and be like, hey, you should subscribe to the Tarver Academy. Tell your friends. You know, email the news station. Let me get some popularity so I can just make more of these videos instead of having to do, like, real jobs. So, just kidding. TTYL. Or seriously, if you want, you can really tell people. Okay, bye. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are learning. Let's learn some math. I want to teach you one thing really quick 
Um, and this is a way with dis distributing that people always mess up. This is a number one way people mess up when they're doing um, the distributive property or whatever you want to call it. Um, let's say you got 2x plus 3 minus 8x plus 2. Okay? You're going to do the distributive property here. You're going to distribute the 4, which means you're multiplying it there and there. So 4 times 2 is 8x, and 4 times 3 is positive 12. Here's where people mess up. They'll take this part and they'll just drop the, I mean, there's no number there, so let's drop the parentheses, make that negative 8x plus 2. Okay, yeah, screwed up, all right? This right here is where you screwed up. They make this negative not as important as it, as it is. It is very important. This negative still deserves the same distributive property that you gave this for. What's always beside a multiplication when you know it's not there? So if it's like um, negative a, you know that the number is always right there. It's always 1, because 1 times that a is still a, but you need that coefficient there. What's the coefficient that's always right here? Negative 1. So what you do is you have to distribute that negative 1 to every term inside here. Boop. Boop. Negative 1 times 8x is negative 8x. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. And then you would combine your like terms. You got 8x minus 8x. Well, that happened to work out nicely. Those cancel each other out. And then 12 minus 2 is 10. You got your answer. And now you know the number one way people mess up with the distributive property. And that's the more you know. Please subscribe if you get a chance. I really appreciate it. Um, that's pretty much it. Check me out on social media, at Tyler Tarver. <laughs> Enough promotion. Get to work. Crazy. Hello. Thank you for coming to Tarver Academy. Please subscribe. Maybe.